we need to start 11 years ago <laughs> when I started applying. There you go. Oh, Tom sorry. talked me into starting to apply for this tag, my or elk tag in uh, unit 2221. Mm -hmm. So I kept applying every year, getting to the point where I can't pull a bow and they don't offer a crossbow here in this state. And I use Tom's rifle, which is beautiful. Got a foot over it. Just over it. Way over it. A good foot over it. A scope set up on it. Yeah. yeah. Except the magazine trip switch. Yeah, I got wounded a couple times. <laughs> it the was magazine the... trip switch is right in the trigger guard, and when the gun kicks, it bangs Dad in the finger. <laughs> He's been bleeding down the mountain ever since he missed the first day. And yeah, when he handed the gun back, his blood on the gun, his blood on me. I'm like, holy smokes. We left. We left Wisconsin about 10:30 oh. <laughs> last Saturday morning. Drove uh, all day, all night. Got here to Tom's in Sunnyside, Nevada about lunchtime and uh, unloaded our stuff and immediately went scouting that night. So there was how many tags I available? I believe 69. 69 tags for this whole unit which runs from Ely all the way to the south end of the Egan Range? I actually clear down to a little town called uh, Heiko. That's the whole boundary of Unit 22. So from Ely to Heiko is? Probably, I want to say about 100 miles. There's two mountain ranges within that distance, run north and south. And the, the biggest share of the unit is wilderness. You can't even go in with um, motorized vehicles. Yeah, you can drive up to a point, and after that, you got to be on foot. foot. So or horses. Right. There's a lot of thick country in here, and there's a lot of open country, so you have a mixture of both. So it's the kind of country where you can actually see elk. And, and yeah. we've seen bulls in the low country in the valley, and we've seen bulls on top of the tallest mountain. Know, so they're, they're spread out, they're everywhere. They're, they're wherever they want to be. They literally are. Yeah. yeah. He's checking to see if he's got hard bottom and able to cross it. <laughs> see, otherwise he might, we might be here. <laughs> What's the verdict? It feels hard down there. You want us to get out? No. Flashing around, just flashing around. Tom had to see if he could make it. I was against it, but we made it. <laughs> yeah, they got to come to it. There are a few creeks that you guys saw that flow water, but for the most part, they have to come to a tank or a spring. Some place to right, some place to drink. Hey, beautiful day. Shut the engine off so you can uh, hear us. <laughs> Uh, we're going to Lund. We came through the pass. I'm not sure what the name of the pass is, but very beautiful, uh, very scenic. Switchbacks, and Dave's going to scan in a little bit here so you can see the beauty. Uh, maybe you can I'll turn off down here. You can see clear down into the valley. Hopefully you can see that. That was kind of cool. Tom said he didn't like this road. I can kind of see why, but we're having a ball here. Not seeing many elk, but I'm sure they're here. We'll do a little glassing and see if we can catch up with something. Down here in the boulders. Pretty cool. We went over, you went up and scouted Long Canyon with Bernie, mm -hmm. and Dad and David and I went over through Patterson Pass over to Dutch John, and we spotted two bulls and a herd of cows. Somebody must have jumped them because they were trailing out of there around the face of Dutch John. That night on our way home, you almost hit that steer. Oh man, I was there was for every close. night. I was having close calls. And wild horses. There's wild horses everywhere. 
That Lake Valley, two valleys west of here, is just full of wild horses. Yeah, we've seen oh, all kinds one, of mule deer. Yeah, what canyon or drive was that? Where they're all Way they're down kind south. of migrating. That's Bailey and Maloney <clears throat> Springs, the southern end of the of that mountain range of Grafton. The, the deer, end. the deer trail out of the mountains this time of year and head to that low country, and mm -hmm. they're starting to rut down there. There's mule deer running mm -hmm. everywhere. Mm -hmm. That's a picture suitable for framing yeah. right there, as Joe Zimmerman would say. Five by four, or does he have the eye guard on his right side? He's got a nice eye guard on his left side. Get him? Yeah, I got him. Did, did he leave? Nope, he's still laying there, sun's hitting him. I just lose him. You should take a picture of him through your there spotting scope. Um, you should take a picture of him there, Scott. Yeah, it's tough country. It's big canyons, long distances, deceiving. Yeah, you know, like, it's very deceiving. We were yeah. picking spots and, and getting out the range finder. And, I mean, spots, certain spots look... 600 yards away were only 400 yards and certain spots that look 100 yards away or 250 yards away. Mm -hmm. It's just real deceiving with all the ups and downs and the vast and the bulls are they're where they are for a reason. I mean they're on bald face mountains where you can see for three quarters of a mile. and Makes it tough. You know you gotta have a long range rifle for, for, for most of it. Tough, they're tough to get close to. That's why they're there. Yeah, absolutely. And we scouted uh, Sunday afternoon, all day Monday, all day Tuesday. We saw bulls all the time. And Tom had some bulls spotted uh, just up here north of Sunnyside in the South Egan Range, up above Long Canyon. Yeah. So we went up there the first day yeah. and climbed the mountain. We were able to drive most of the way, so it wasn't a real bad hike. three bulls we could never find the third one found uh, the two and dad ended up getting a shot what was it Tom 500 590 590 yards there you go Tough shot for someone who hasn't shot long range before, but he missed it, but not by much. That was a nice one. Yeah. Yeah. Then we thought we were going to get another shot. A little bit later, they moved down in the trees. 
Yeah, we were able to find them again about, what, a half mile from where they were originally? Yeah, I think we got, I was trying to get us in a little closer. We got them all batted at 500 yards right now. There. But trying to get a little greedy, and I think in hindsight we might have, probably should have shot, I think it was probably six, 650 yards again at that point. Oh, no! <laughs> Shot, you know, but hindsight's always better than foresight. Well, we gotta either we gotta we gotta off it back up there to my truck or we go down to his. You the boss. So that was a long walk out of there. Rather than going back to Tom's truck, we had parked Dad's truck at Big Spring. So we walked all the way from up on top all the way down to the to Dad's truck and left Tom's truck on top of the mountain for ended up what two days it sat up two days it sat up there. Well, we saw some bulls. We got, got close to some bulls. We shot at a bull. Almost shot at another bull. Practice, practice, practice. We had seen bulls over by Grassy Mountain. So the next day we drove over there and hunted that, and left Tom's truck up there in Long Canyon. And uh, on our way over to Grassy Mountain, we spotted a bull right off the road and uh, snuck in on that one and ended up passing that one up. It was with a bunch of cows. Six by six down there, but he's not huge, just nice. I don't think he's gonna shoot at him. Grassy Mountain and never saw anything the second day over there. Uh, well, we did see a really nice bull. That was when we were when we were scouting at the end of the first day. That That's real nice those. narrow six by six right in the Chingle Pass. Oh yeah, that was in. He's a real oh, yeah. pretty bull. Very. Pretty we saw bull. two six point bulls. Yeah, right then there. you and I saw one. That was right. uh, so. That was when we were still scouting. So let's see, that was Tuesday. Let's see, Wednesday he missed. Thursday we hunted Grassy Mountain. Thursday night when we were coming home, we had uh, some cows and a bull try and cross the road right in front of us. So we got a good look at that bull in the headlights. He's a six by six. Look at his left side. One, two, three, four, five. No, one, two, three, four, five. He's a five by six. And the next morning, we were driving by and we caught a bull moving up through those trees. And we just, we tried to get above him and see him again. We never saw him again. So Friday night, we snuck in there before dark and just sat and hoped that they would come down towards the road again and nothing ever materialized. So then Saturday, we drove up uh, by Don and Steve's camp and went up by White Rock. And we spotted beautiful up there. five bulls and a bunch of cows. We counted 18 elk on that mountain. So we climbed all the way up from the spring where Steve shot his bull the day before and got all the way up in there. And I, I think the wind got us. The wind was out of the south blowing right up the canyon. That bad news, Paul. What's that? They're gone. He's spooked. The next mountain. You saw him go? Uh, there's more than 18. There's a whole pile of them in there, but I think there were some in the bottom that probably winded us. We got all the way up there and Tom and I crested the hill just in time to see between 25 and 30 elk and 
I don't know, probably six or seven bulls going over the mountain to the north. So that kind of ended that hunt. Bummer. Yeah, you got that. That morning when we were looking for those elk, I spotted bulls. What is that across there? A mile and a half? At, At least, least yeah. a mile and a half Long to the way. north. So yesterday morning we drove up into that country and immediately Tom spotted five bulls on the mountain where Dad shot his. Yeah, well, we spotted the bull, uh, I think around 7.30. Mm, six o'clock. Six o'clock. Just after sun up. And yeah. then we kept watching and uh, tried to see whether they were going to lay down or not. There was three bulls up on top of the mountain and the two bigger bulls down low. Down below. We, we liked the two bigger ones, obviously. Well, while we were watching them, the three upper bulls got antsy and were looking to the north and I moved the spotting scope over just a little bit and a mountain lion comes slithering down the mountain right with the elk. But it didn't spook them or anything. It's in the trees below them. I see now. him. Where's There's he a at? lion. Where's he at? He's below them, Dad. He's behind a tree right now coming down that wash where those upper bulls are. Just stop behind a tree. Here he comes. He's coming out right now from below that tree. Coming right down the wall. You gotta be shitting me. Frickin' mountain lion. Cross that off my bucket list. I've seen a mountain lion in the wild. So then we got our uh, gear together and tried to come down with a plan. We ain't screwing this up. This is it. That's the biggest bull we had right there. My two guides here decided we're where we try to make an attempt to, to get up, at least in position when the, when the bulls would get up later in the morning. We were hoping kind of let them lay down and then uh, we took off with our gear around 8.30, mm -hmm. 8 o'clock, and went down the canyons. They're laying the snow patch over there. That's it. We went up and down some of the canyons and then as we were going it looked like they had to change position and so we spent most of the day going up and down, up and down and finally got in position around, must have been around quarter to three. Mm -hmm. Two o'clock probably we were there. I'd say about two, yeah. We couldn't find though, we could find, see the upper bulls, we couldn't find the lower ones. When we were on our way in we kept an eye on the one bull, we could see him bedded on a snow patch. And then when we got there, when we were in shooting range, they were gone. And the upper bulls just all of a sudden, like, they knew we were there and they just trailed out of there, went north. They're, they have a sense about them. They just kind of sense when something's up and they react to it. But there's well, some, that helps keep them alive. Exactly <laughs> right. Well, we figured the other two were probably there somewhere, at least we were hoping they were, and we kept easing around. and got close with Tom and we came around uh, where they had been bedded before and all of a sudden Tom must have saw him and he was holding the gun and he, I saw him loading so I figured there must be a bull or somewhere and uh, he came out about 200 yards. Going down. Going down. Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> no! Motherfucker! Big bull down! Yeah, that's the big one. Oh, fuck you, man. Yeah. I think he got you down. He gets rolled over. He's down. Oh, hell yes. You got the big son, bitch. You got him. It's done. How far is it, Tom? 203. <sighs> son of a bitch. <laughs> Good job, Keith. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. I kind of got out of control mm -hmm. there for a minute and got the second shot, and uh, the bull went down, rolled over, and he hit him with both shots. One shot was a little high, the other shot was right in the bread basket. Mm -hmm. So when he shot the bull, it was 3 o'clock. So then by the time we got That's over when to the work it. Started. <laughs> what a day! <clears throat> Well, he got whale tails, though. Huh? <laughs> <laughs>
Look at the swords on them. We took pictures and then uh, we skinned the elk out, caped it out, cut the horns off on the mountain, boned it on the mountain, and packed it up. And Dad just brought himself and a little bit off the mountain. Tom had what you must have had front quarters, back strap, and loins. Mm -hmm. I had the cape and the horns, and David Johnson came down the mountain with both hind quarters and a back strap on his back. I don't know what his pack weighed, but... Maybe 20 pounds. He was lighter than us. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe hey, 120. Gotta, but like I said... Gotta, gotta do what do you it. gotta do. It was a yeah. challenge coming out of there at night with all that weight. and uh, I gotta thank all you guys. This, this wouldn't happen without all of you. Beaver and Tom for making me continue to keep applying. And, Dave, our cameraman, who carried most of the weight out. <laughs> yeah, it was, was a quite a challenge. So we got off the mountain, back to the truck. It was 10 o'clock last night, and we got back here to Sunnyside at midnight. It was a, it was a long day yesterday. I left here at 4 in the morning and got home at midnight. But uh, Got her done, anyway. And it's a, a nice 6x6. Six six. So thank you, and thank everybody again. Appreciate it. So, about to score. It's a big, mature bull elk. Nice. Yeah. We got back to the truck and Tom tried to back. pick up Dave's pack. He's like, oh man, I didn't realize it was that heavy. It was, I was laughing. It, it was so heavy. It was ridiculous, actually. <laughs> you know, when, when you were filling his pack up with that meat, I was looking at it thinking, better him than me. <laughs> You happy now? Huh? You got your foot in Another tape? Another tape? Take yeah, tape. Yeah, Start over. <laughs> By the way, this is all David's idea. <laughs> Thanks, guys! Sometimes this actually works.